George, how did a rancher's knife become such an icon of the EDC world? Let's talk knives. Hey everybody, it is I, Spencer, and Poppy George here Daddy today. Daddy George, please. My apologies. Today at Blade HQ, we wanted to discuss one of the most legendary knives around today. It's been around for well over 20 years. Where did it come from? Why is it here? And where is it going? It's the Benchmade 940 from Warren Osborne. Now, unlike almost any other knife out there, the 940 has remained incredibly popular for over two decades at this point. And it's got a really cool story behind it, and that's what we're telling today. And we also ask you guys out in social media land to share us your stories and photos of the 940, and we're gonna be sharing those later on in the show, so stick around. Well, it was designed by Warren Osborne, and it was based off of his ranch knife. He made a knife that was for his time with the cows, and, and he had a knife that he built specifically for the job and it was really awesome, and Benjamin wanted to turn it into a folder. So, in fact, the other knife that I think of when I think of a ranch knife is a spay blade, sure. and, I mean, I have one right here. If you just compare those two tips, there's some reminiscence there. Yeah. It's it's a ranch knife. It is hard to, to not see that and think like, uh, yeah. <laughs> that was, they had that in mind for sure. This knife has, for the last 20 years, been incredibly popular. One of the best-selling knives we've ever had at Blade HQ. So when the knife was first released, it was a little bit different than it is today, although it did look the same. Uh, just some quick specs for those that are unaware. The, the blade is about three and a half inches, just a little bit lower, and the entire length of the knife is, comes in at just under eight inches. It's about 2.9 ounces. So originally the blade steel was 154 cm when it first came out, and it came with a plain edge as well as serrated. So one of the most noticeable things on this knife when it debuted was the axis lock. Now the lock originally came out a couple years prior on the Benchmade 710, which is the McHenry and Williams, and that knife lasted quite a while until it was dis discontinued. And so it also found its way onto the Benchmade 940. Where it is today. Some of the key things about the access lock, uh, number one is it allows for ambidextrous use. So it doesn't matter what hand you are, you're gonna be able to use this knife, so lefties get a little love as well. Uh, it's easy to operate with one hand. It gives you a couple options for opening the knife using the thub stud or simply just grabbing the access lock and Gravity. And that's a lot of fun. It kind of annoys your coworker when it bonks against the pin though. I can't carry my Gripsilian for that reason. Yeah. I don't tend to use it that way very much, but I do pull it closed so it drops shut, so. What I thought was super interesting about this is when it came out, it was super different from any other knife out there. First of all, it was green and it had this purple backspacer. And I mean- It's more like it should be Norman Osborne's knife. Like exactly, it would be his knife. It's some neat trick. Yeah, and in recent years, like this is the Benchmade Freak, one of my favorites. And this one has the pop of red, but that was new. This pioneered pops of color in the backspacer. Which I think is is kind of odd for what was made as a work knife. It, I think when I think work knife, kind of a traditional sense, I'll think Buck 110 or something where it's, it's a little more rustic. It has the brass in it, but this I, Warren wasn't going for that at all with this knife. He was almost leaning into the gentleman's carry uh, as well as it being a, a work knife. Yeah, and that's one of my favorite things about this knife is it like you put it in your hand, and it feels like a hard work knife, but it also I, I could carry that in a pair of slacks and it would fit right in. What a great knife. Let's talk about the blade a little bit. Oh yeah, that reverse Tonto. Now the slim blade has a nice thickness to it and the swedge over here on the reverse Tonto allows for the tip to be super strong as well. So the blade itself is strong. It's great for those tasks when you need to get out and really put some weight into it. You don't have to worry about something like a full tall flat grind uh, giving to the weight that you're putting on it. So it's really able to do most of the tasks that you would any given day. But it's so slim. Like, yeah. It doesn't look like it should, but it can. And I think it's one of the reasons everybody loves it and it's been around so long. And I think it's like, it's like the biggest knife you can get while still focusing on weight and the slim feel to it. Because when you do carry this in your pocket, it really does disappear. You don't really feel it in there until you need to use it. Some people still think it's too big, but Benjamin has you covered. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. So the 940 has been around for just over 20 years. And so we went through and tried to round up as, as much as we could from the different iterations of them. So when it was first released, this is what it looked like. And a few models came out when it was first released. Uh, what did those look like? So the first was the 940 and the 942. 
So the 940 was this one, and the 942 was black and it had a serrated blade. And then in 2004, the 941 and 3 came out. And we actually have one of those here. This one is Showed off. comes from our owner, Jim. I want this knife so bad. I asked, hey, can I have this? And he says, no, I love that knife. It's my favorite one. I'm like, yeah, it would be my favorite too. These ones had these nice clip point yes. blades. Super good looking. And this one's a limited edition with this orange peel titanium and S30V. What a flex. I wonder why that one didn't stick. Yeah, I wonder too. It's a really great knife though. If you can find one, grab one. They're really awesome. Anyway, so in the late 2000s, they upgraded all the models to S30V standard. This one's 154CM, that one's Jim's. And that was a big upgrade. And then in 2014, the 940-1 came out. And this thing took it to a completely new premium level with this S90V blade and these carbon fiber scales. And this one was flow through, so no backspacer. These lovely blue barrel spacers. I think if this came with a coated blade, this would be my jam right here. Yeah, I, I kind of like the contrast. Yeah. I like the stone wash against the carbon fiber. It's a good match. It looks classy. Now, a couple years later in 2016, we saw the 940-2, and this one goes back to the S30V blade, uh, but you get G10 handles, and then you have the green standoffs. Again, the flow through design. So if you get any dust or anything in there, you just blow it right out, you're good to go. No disassembly required. And these are currently on bladehq.com and you can get these for $189. The price is a little bit better because of the G10 scales as well as the S30V blade. Should we talk about the automatic real fast? Yeah, people wanted a tactical option. Okay. Let them know. So, this one was the automatic, the 9400. That's the trick on Benchmade. If it has four numbers, it's an auto. Three, it's a folder. Two, it's a fixed blade or a butterfly. This one only came out maybe two years ago, I wanna yeah. say. I was here when it came out. Y'all bought it fast, but luckily we have them in stock now. Yeah, these things are great. They, instead of the access lock, you get this button lock and a very chalky aluminum that's nice and grippy, but still has the contours you want. It's not gonna chew up your hand at all. And it snaps it real does. fast. I think when it first <laughs> came out too, it all, I think there was a coated blade option as well. Yeah, I think there is. We just brought this one on. I think it matches the, the original yes. quite nicely. Yes. Brothers. I mean, you can't tell the difference at all, I'll tell you. Super great. Secondary lock on the back and that purple backspacer we all know and love. Yeah, 9400 is a great choice, especially if you wanted to put this into more of a tactical role. If I was going out to the sandbox or something, I would grab me that 9400 real quick. So it was around this time also that people started asking for a mini version of the 940 and Benchmade delivered with the 945. This thing, like when I first saw it, I was privy to the release when it came out. And I'm like, that thing's gonna be too small because this thing just fits the hand so good. But randomly it fits and it does the, the old bend finger test really nice. It just, they just took the blade and shrunk it down. <laughs> like it's, everything's still there. It's just the hair small, which was why it's mini. Yeah, but they maintain the thickness yes. of the lock, which I really appreciate. I don't have to think it's weaker now. It's still just as strong as the original. So it was around this time people saw Benchmade's upgrading their 940. Maybe we can get in on this game too. And that's when it became a modding platform. And you find people with new scales, with new standoffs, re-anodizing their backspacers, even some people grinding new blades yeah. for the thing. That was just a lot of fun. And we have a lot of cool stuff from you guys on those pictures of the ways you've modified your 940. It is a lot of fun. And then we over here at Blade HQ saw a lot of people playing around with the moddings. And we thought, you know, we want our dream 940 too. But the fact that we are Bleed HQ means that we can arrange some things. And so we made this exclusive. And my goodness, do I love it. Yeah, th it really, this one takes it from, I wanna say gentleman, but it's really more aggressive. I think that coated blade and the hardware, it really takes it to a different place. Yeah, and I think this is the first one that had CPM M4 as well, which is a carbon steel. That's correct. A little bit tougher and better edge retention, but it'll rust on you. Natural or jade as we call it, G10 scales. It's hot. I love it. Yeah. I actually have this one. Check it out. Oh. So if I put a deep carry pod clip on it, you can do that. Mm -hmm. By the way, can we talk about Flytanium for a second? Let's do it. Yeah, so we have friends of Flytanium who make some aftermarket parts for these. And these are a really easy, simple way to add some flair to your knife. And this one, they got the purple barrel spacers. This one, I believe, had the green yes. aluminum to start with. But I put that OD green micarta on. That micarta, it, it's super rustic. It has a really good feel to it uh, until it gets a little bit goopy, but <laughs> they feel great. Uh, and the cost of these are actually, you could fit it into your budget for sure. But what I think is great here is the story of the 940 is from the ground up. It was made for users 
and then it was upgraded over time, and it really hasn't rested on its laurels. It's always been with it. So it kind of makes me wonder what's gonna happen in the next 20 years. Where do you think it's going? We thought we had a pretty good collection here, but Steve McDermott on Facebook, he kind of showed us up. He's got his collection here, and he's, it's pretty deep. Yeah, all new in box, yes. too. I don't think they've been used. Yeah, I like that Damascus with the blue and black G10. And the 943. What a great shot. All blacked out. Great blacked collection, out. Steve. I'm jealous. Mm -hmm. Now looking at modifications, some of the people that submitted photos had theirs decked out. Uh, this one comes from Booms, Blades, and Backwoods. And he's got the brass flytanium treatment, brass thumb stud. Look at those hands. Those hands have been to work. That's one of my favorite things about the 940s. You see so many beat up 940s. Yeah. And the, the brass, the more and more you use it, the better it even looks. Nice. So this next one comes from TDC underscore daily underscore carry over on Instagram. And he's got these really nice titanium scales with this micarta inlay on them. Yeah. Can you imagine how a pinch grip on that would be? These come from, it's at death grip scales. He's on Instagram. I believe he's a one man shop. He does some phenomenal work for all kinds of models. So, and it looks great with that, the brass accents uh, with the lighter. Yeah. I like it's a great photo. Really great photo. Great knife too. Good job. Thanks for sending that in. This last one comes from Napster Ninja on Instagram. It's like he downloaded all these knives. Yeah, probably for free too. <laughs> this one, this one's actually pretty cool. This is, he calls it the Beskar Steel uh, Scales. It must have been very expensive. He also has an acid watch blade. It looks great. It's, it's, it's pretty awesome. And he has a Stormtrooper theme going and all the knives in the background. Big love letter to Star Wars. Yeah. Well done, looks great. Mm -hmm. And make sure you guys tell us which one is your favorite photo. Uh, we want to know. And so down in the description will be a link and you can vote. So just let us know which one you like the best. And the winner will actually win one of these exclusive Benchmade 940 Osborns from Blade HQ only. And one last thing, in case you missed out the last time, this Blade HQ exclusive 940 in the M4 Steel and JG10 is coming back soon. So in the description will actually be the drop date. Make sure you go on bladehq.com and sign up for the wish list. Follow us on Instagram for more announcements and you can get your very own exclusive 940 from Benchmade. Yeah, I'm on the wish list, are you? I already have one. You're gonna get one? Yeah, I'd like to. Excellent. It's a really cool knife. Yeah. Great. <laughs> What, what's the 940 gonna do next? Where is it going in the next 20 years? Let us know in the comments. Always make sure you guys like and subscribe. If you own the Osborne, tell us about it. Tell us your stories. We love to hear it. The community loves to hear it. So this is one of our favorite pocket knives to carry around, but if you wanna see some more of our favorite fixed blade knives for camping, check out this video next, and we'll see you on the next one.